Story time. So about a month ago, I went out to visit my dad in Halifax, Nova Scotia. That's on the east coast of Canada. I live in Ontario, northern Ontario. That's like central Canada. The last time I saw my dad before this was like three years ago. At that time, he came with me. We went to Bahrain to race the half Ironman that was going on there. He came in a supporting role, helped me out, but we got to spend like 10 days together, super quality time. After the race, we went to Italy and just had a good time. We walked like 40 kilometers, had some good food, had some good wine. It was amazing. That was the last time I saw my dad. So this trip was gonna be epic. The first time seeing him in three years. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about time. Let's talk about what's important. Uh, let's chat. So a good friend of mine, Brian, shout out Brian, he once posed this question to me. How much time do you have left with your dad? Then I had to think about it. And I was like, I don't know, it depends on how long I live or how long he lives. And that's true, it makes sense. But let's say your dad lives, like my dad, across the country. And let's assume you only see him once a year, maybe for three days, okay? Let's say your dad is 60. And let's say he only lives to 80, okay? That's three days a year for 20 years. That's only 60 days. So does that mean that I only have 60 days left with my dad? If he's 60, he only lives to be 80. And we only spend three days per year together. I mean, not including talking on the phone, not including FaceTime chats and things like that. I mean, yeah, I guess that is true. I guess that's all the time that I have left with him. So imagine the impact of a loss of three years. That's huge. Three years with the big guy. So it's time to fix that. It's time to make it a priority to spend time with the people in your life that matter. And I mean, certainly I urge everyone to do that, but it's something that I need to do better at as well. So I went to go see my dad. Uh, but first, why don't you check out um, a quick montage of some of the footage from when I went to see my dad last time. Here it is. How you doing, big guy? I'm doing great. We are in the process of packing up the felt. It's actually going really well. What do you think, Dad? You pumped for this trip or what? Super pumped, super pumped. What am I talking into there? Just look at the lens. You excited to come with us on this trip? I'm not going on the trip. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> What's going on, Pancake? You coming with us? Good morning, we're heading to the airport. And of course, it's freezing rain. Fortunately, Steph just got new snow tires put on this thing, but they're not ice tires. And the car is covered in ice. So now our task remains, remove the ice from the car before we do this drive. Okay, that's one way to do it. Right we have way. a scraper in the car, Dad. Yep. Oh boy, this is what we're dealing with. Careful, this is gonna be a treacherous ride. Oh. Well, at least we're on the road, but it is freezing rain. Poor Steph is behind the wheel driving. Is it stressful? You're doing a really good job. Big Daddy's in the back. We made it through security without cavity search. Nice. Always good. Oh boy. Whoa, the echo here is crazy. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, hello. Yeah, thank you. Please go. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks so much. Sorry. And we made it, somehow, to Bahrain. How are you feeling, Big Daddy? Feeling good, I'm pumped.
boom. What do you think? I think you couldn't get any closer. That was fun, right? So here's what I love about my dad. He's super positive. He's so enthusiastic. He always makes an effort to see things through a positive light, and he often, I think probably to a fault, sees the best in people. And this, this is great. Now my dad and I haven't always had the best relationship. When I was younger, things were tougher, issues at home, issues in the family. We didn't get along well. Thankfully, that's something that's changed as I've grown up, and as he has grown, we've been able to grow together, and it's been a blast. So back to the visit. I'll share what I can with you, but I didn't do as much filming as I would have liked to. It's the product of being present, being in the moment, being there for something as important as this visit was. It just sometimes means you don't want to experience it through a lens. And so I'll share with you what I have and what I can. All right, check it out. There he is. The man, the myth, the legend. There he is. I haven't seen him in three years. And then some. Good to see ya. Good to see you too. Miss ya. Anyways, I was behind the cop. Yeah. Yeah, but before that? Look at this beauty. Look at Gotta look at him. Yeah. Take him in with the Ford F-150. What a beauty. Yeah, not a beauty truck, but a beauty. You look good. Ready to go? Yeah, how was the flight? Yeah, it was okay. Yeah. Not bad. So you guys just want a little bit? Oh yeah. Okay, put it on top of the food. If you're oh, speaking new of phone, course. eh? Look at that. I think I took that picture. Yeah, I did. What a beauty. Look at you. Where to now? Uh, well, I gotta make sure you got food so you don't starve to death. Okay, well, I don't think that'll happen. Let's go hit it up. Hit it up. Sight for sore eyes. And again, glasses, uh, as much as they're nice, they're not so nice. Oh, those are stellar. Locked. Let's go. go, let's go. So today is an impromptu little hike, a little trip out to Cape Split. I've never been. This big guy's done it a couple times. And uh, what, what's the plan, Dad? We're gonna, it's about an hour drive? It'll be about an hour drive. We'll stop at uh, Blomid and Luka, have a little peek, maybe take a few pics, and then we're gonna roll. <laughs> that sounds great. Yeah, so it's 6.30 in the morning, getting an early rise at it. Um, yeah, we'll take you along. We've made it to uh, Cape Split. Waiting on this guy to get his act together. Big Ronnie, we're starting the hike. Impromptu Cape Split trip. Let's get it going. So I don't know, I get my, uh, my watch going here. Um, I don't know exactly uh, the duration of this trail. Apparently they've recently remarked it. There's a loop. I think it's 14 kilometers or something like that. Perfect. We're gonna find out anyways. It's like a balmy one degree. It's low tide. We're gonna scope it out. Oh boy. I feel like this is how most horror movies start. Not great. So this trip really is totally impromptu. I didn't even have the right kind of footwear. I had to borrow some shoes. And not good shoes. So we're on the hustle now. It's rocky and muddy. It's gonna be awesome. Aha! A deceased pumpkin. There he is. Oop, there he is. And there you are. Yep. 
As soon as we get out of, out of sight, it'll take off. But you know, sometimes you gotta work through it. Correct. That's true. I mean, you are a resilient person. Gotta get her done. You gotta get her done. Okay, the front of me is cold. Okay. And the back of me was a backpack and it was hot. Yeah. Like super hot. Okay. Like get naked. Oh, oh. Oh yeah, there's uh, more ice here than I figured it would Yeah, this is very icy actually. Stellar visit, stellar hike, amazing. Then when it came time for me to go home, well. Let me see if we have any availabilities today. I don't think so because of the fog that is happening in Toronto. Oh. That's why everything is being moved to tomorrow. Just give me a moment, I'm yeah, just looking no problem. Good for you. Yeah, they're all canceled. All of them. So despite this, I did manage to get on an early flight the next morning. Unfortunately, flying to Sudbury, Ontario, which is where my destination was, was not possible. But my car was at the Sudbury airport. So, fly from Halifax to Toronto, rent a car, drive up, take a cab to the airport, and then drive to my night shift in a small Northern Ontario hospital. And I made it. I did make it to work on time, but it was a longer day than I intended. Anyways, thanks for coming along on this journey. Call your dad.